Hi, Stage 1 Biology team. Um, this is the tutorial for Chapter 1.6, Microorganisms. Um, microorganisms are often um, called microbes and um, micro meaning they're really, really small, so they're microscopic. Um, they can be both um, either, sorry, unicellular or multicellular. Um, some common microbes are bacteria, fungi, and protists. Um, a tricky one are viruses, actually, which is um, quite topical at the moment. Um, as we know, viruses are non-living, um, but they also can be considered microbes, um, which is interesting. Um, and they're really, um, they are quite small. They're much smaller than um, eukaryotic cells. Um, I'm working off the textbook here. If you have a look at page 79, um, there's a picture of some cells. It's figure 1.69. Um, check that one out to see how small they are. Um, so I'll go through some of the microbes now. Bacteria is the first one, um, unicellular. Um, they're prokaryotic cells and they're found in air, soil, water, um, inside multicellular organisms like us. Um, and they're pretty simple. Have a look at page 79, 1.70 to see the structure. Fungi are eukaryotes. Um, they have a nucleus, um, hence eukaryotes. Um, can be unicellular or multicellular. Um, and yeast is an example of a unicellular fungus and mushrooms are an example of a multicellular fung fungi. Um, why did the mushroom get invited to the party? Because he seemed like a fungi. Good one. Um, they're heterotrophic, so they consume things to um, respire and get their energy and they can't photosynthesize. Photosynthetic organisms are known as autotrophic. Um, fungi are heterotrophic. Um, next are protists. Protists are eukaryotes. Um, really diverse range of protists. Can be autotrophs, can be heterotrophs. Um, include algae, phytoplankton, euglena, um, amoeba, um, lots of examples of protists and most are unicellular. Um, on page 81, your text talks about um, how bacteria can grow really, really, really fast and exponentially. Um, so one turns to two in about 20 minutes after 40 minutes, that two is suddenly four. After 60 minutes, that four is suddenly eight. Um, you can see how it's exponential. Um, they reproduce through binary fission. Um, we looked at that earlier. Um, we said that prokaryotic cells reproduce through binary fission. Um, so that's when one cell divides into two. Um, and remember, they're identical to the original cell. Um, like I said before, can reproduce every 20 minutes if the conditions are right. Um, they need this rapid reproduction because they live in harsh conditions. Um, and their growth can be limited by things like nutrient and water availability. Um, different bacteria require different um, conditions. So if you have a look on page 82 and 83, it talks about these. Um, some specific conditions, um, physical conditions are temperature, pH or water content, and some chemical conditions are nutrients and wastes. So um, there's some specific um, language that we use around different bacteria and um, their temperature conditions. So the sacrophiles, the mesophiles, and the thermophiles, um, cold environments, modern temperature environments, or high temperature environments, they each have a different um, optimum. 
Um, they'll grow within a um, temperature range. They have a minimum and a maximum, and then they have an optimum, which um, that's when growth rate is the highest or the fastest. Um, temperature affects the functions of important molecules in the cells, especially enzymes. Enzymes are really temperature specific. So enzymes um, control all of the reactions in a cell, the anabolic and catabolic re reactions, whether they're building up or breaking down. Um, enzymes don't really function that well if they're above um, the maximum or below the minimum. Um, so it's really important that the temperature is right for enzyme activity and enzymes um, in bacteria. Same with um, pH, enzyme activity really um, can be impacted by a different pH. So pH refers to re the relative acidity or alkalinity of a solution. So zero to six is acid, seven is neutral, and eight to 14 is alkaline. There's an image of this on page 83. Acidophiles um, are in acid, really low pH. Neutrophiles in that middle area, the neutral area, and alkalophiles in um, the high pH areas. Um, moisture or the water content um, affects the structure and function of the cells because nutrients and waste are dissolved in water and move across the membrane in water. So it's really important to have the right amount. Um, water is also the ma major solvent for chemical processes. Um, movement of water in and out of the cell can also influence cell division um, if the membrane becomes detached to the cell wall. Um, nutrients are also really important for microbes. Um, microbes cannot reproduce without um, nutrients. Um, there's a table of common nutrients on page 85. Um, they include carbon, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, minerals, vitamins, and oxygen. And you can see on the PowerPoint um, that they're important for various things. And they come from various things, whether the atmosphere or the soil um, or other organic matter. Waste removal is also important in microbes because um, accumulation of waste can inhibit growth. Um, waste include carbon dioxide, urea, um, excess water, sulfur, iron, um, and organic wastes. Um, they can be moved across the membrane by transport proteins, um, and sometimes they're broken down by specific enzymes. Come on, PowerPoint, don't fail me now. Here we go. Um, within ecosystems, microorganisms act as decomposers, so they can recycle um, essential nutrients. They're really important for ecosystems. Um, decomposers are microbes that break down dead organisms. Um, they're heterotrophs, so they obtain nutrients um, from detritus. And I know a lot of language today. Detritus um, is the non-living organic material, um, including the remains of dead organisms, fallen leaves, wood, and animal waste. Um, so they can really recycle the nutrients um, in um, an ecosystem, really important. Um, these include bacteria and fungi. Um, they release, or we use um, the word secrete enzymes that digest this detritus. Um, and they, when they um, secrete those enzymes and digest this detritus, any nutrients can then move into the microbes and they're using those for metabolism. Um, so it's important for the organism and it's important for the ecosystem as well. I'm working off of um, page 86 here. Um, if you have a look on figure 1.78, it shows the importance of decomposers um, for um, linking the producers, so the green um, trees, plants, to the consumers. 
Um, the next part, we look at microorganisms and their importance to humans. So we often think of microbes as being harmful. Um, uh, watch out for harmful bacteria and things like that, viruses also. Um, but less than 1% of microbes are actually harmful. So a lot of them are vital um, for our di digestive and immune systems. Um, we can also use them in genetic engineering, medicine, food production, um, and waste. So really important. Um, within the large intestine, there's a really large number of bacteria. And those bacteria contain enzymes that break down the polysaccharides, the um, complex sugars, um, that could not be digested earlier. Um, and then they can break them down um, for us. So it's really important that we have um, good bacteria in the large intestines. And you would hear about that stuff as well um, when people are trying to sell you um, products to try and boost the amount of good bacteria in your gut. Um, phytoplankton are photoautotrophs and they're um, really important producers within um, ecosystems. So um, they use carbon dioxide and water to produce glucose and oxygen, photosynthesis. Um, so they're removing the carbon dioxide and producing oxygen, and you can see that would really benefit the other consumers in the ecosystem. Um, this is pretty complex, this part. Um, we can use recombinant DNA um, technology for genetic modification or genetic engineering. Recombinant DNA just means a combination of DNA. So we can take one gene from one organism and combine it with another um, to benefit us in some way, whether that's producing um, insulin or check out GlowCats, Google it, um, you'll have a good time. Um, but that's made from genetic modification. So we actually need microbial DNA um, for this to work. Um, the process is outlined on page 88 and 291, and I'll quickly go through it now. So we get a gene of interest out of an organism. Um, we'll take it from that organism. Um, we'll cut it out with things called restriction enzymes. So enzymes are really important for removing that gene of interest. We'll then use something called PCR, the polymerase chain reaction, to get multiple copies of that gene. That gene is then inserted into a vector, and that's where the microbial DNA comes into it. So the vector is usually DNA from um, bacteria. We sometimes call that a plasmid. Remember that circular DNA. Um, the vector with the new, um, the new gene is then put back into the bacteria and we grow lots and lots and lots of copies. We know that bacteria can multiply really quickly. Um, and then the gene is expressed into a protein and the protein is then collected for us to use. An example of this is insulin, um, which is a hormone, which is a protein. And they talk about how um, they do that on pages 89 to 91. Um, we also culture microorganisms for food and drink products, and we've been doing that for about 10,000 years. So brewing beer, um, fermenting, curing, pickling, um, beer, wine, bread, cheeses, yogurt, sour cream. So many examples there on page 91 of your text. The next part of this chapter looks at food spoilage. So spoilage is um, anything negative in the normal state of food, whether that's a smell, sight, texture, or taste. Um, microbes have enzymes, I'm using that word a lot um, in this chapter, and they break down compounds in food. Sometimes the products, so they break it down, the new products, um, they have negative tastes and smells, and that's um, when your food's gone bad. So in fruit, there's um, some breaking down of compounds in fruit that will result in a product called pectin, and um, pectin causes rotting. There's more examples on page 92 of your text. 
Um, there's lots of foodborne diseases that occur from um, spoilage. Um,